Welcome to the second Questions of Faith blog podcast. Today, November 1st, 2013, we are going to be recording from Bismarck, North Dakota on the subject of people losing their faith while in college. We'll talk about why so many college students are leaving their faith, why it's gotten worse and how it started, and what would be the different challenges faced by male students and female students in college. But before we begin our discussion about students losing their faith in college, we should introduce ourselves. Ian, would you like to start? Sure. My name is Ian. I'm Ian Stewart. I'm from Michigan, and right now I'm majoring in mass communications. And today I'm going to be talking about why college students are leaving their faith, uh, about how many, and I'm going to talk about some of the specific challenges as a, being a guy on a campus. Nicolette? Hi, I'm Nicolette DeRosier. I am from Minnesota, and I am also a mass communications major. And I'm going to be talking about some of the ways that you can get involved in your faith and keep it while in college. And my name is Emmy Holm. I am from right here in North Dakota, and I attend U Mary and major in mass communications. I will be the moderator of our discussion involving college kids losing their faith. So to start us off, Ian, would you talk about the fact that so many college students are abandoning their faith? Basically, I guess it would be also good to understand how we know this. Mm -hmm. Are these statistics or, it is, or is it just a generalization of the population? Yeah. Well, there's, there's not many uh, studies that have been done on it. You know, people just kind of feel, feel like it's happening, but there's, there's not a whole lot of evidence. There is a, I did find a couple studies. There's a George Barner group, which um, does studies for mostly church organizations. Um, and they came up with 65% of Christian college students leave their faith after the first year. Wow. And there's another website, um, Reach SOSV, which is San Diego State University website, and they say it's 70% college students leave their faith. So it's definitely over half of college students that leave, and it's, it's quite a large number, actually. Yeah. Um, and as far as why it's gotten worse, uh, you know, there's a lot of different challenges, uh, especially in today's modern world. There's, you know, alcohol, drugs, sex. Uh, there's peer pressure. You know, being in the in the wrong group, and then there's there's uh, the great increase in freedom when a college student leaves home, really contributes to you know they're away from their parents, new friend groups, a lot of spare time. You know, yep. it's a lot of chances for temptation. Um, and as far as some early beginnings on how it started, um, I would say maybe one reason would be that the shift away from more traditional mindset into a more liberal mindset at schools. Um, you, know, you know, back in the early 20th century, you know, there were schools, you had segregated schools, a um, lot more traditional mindset. And now, you know, we have the schools, co-ed schools, co-ed dorms even, uh, really more liberal school settings. And faith was part of that tradition. So when the tradition started going, the faith kind of went with it too, that whole mindset, you know. So... Yeah, it didn't really happen overnight. It kind of was a gradual shift mm -hmm. to a more liberal mindset. Mm -hmm. So, Have you had the experience of losing your faith in college or someone close to you, maybe? Um, I, I did have a friend back home, actually, who went to a secular college in my hometown and did indeed fall away from her faith. Um, you know, she was always involved in youth group. Um really regularly, you know, she went, she went in retreats, she was really into her faith, and then she went to this college, and she started hanging out with the wrong group of friends, and the next, next thing I knew, she, she wasn't going to church anymore, you know, she, she was getting drunk every weekend, sleeping around, getting into a lot of trouble, and it just kind of shows how if you go into college unprepared and without a solid base, um, especially a good youth group, that it's really easy to lose your faith. Yeah, definitely. Um, another thing that I think would be helpful to discuss today mm. would be the differences and problems that males and females face. Could you both elaborate on that? So what are the, some of the specific things that you faced or know others are facing? Mm -hmm. you know, Ian, you wanted to start that one off? Sure. Yep, I'll start that off. Um, at, you know, answering the question, what are some specific uh, problems that males face on a college campus? Um, and you know, these challenges kind of can apply to both men and women, but I think men experience men and women experience the temptations in different ways. So, um, you know, for guys, there's um, there's laziness. You know, play video games all day instead of studying. Uh, there's usually unrestricted access to the internet, which can lead to impurity or wasting time. Um, so that that's I know 
I know some some people personally who have had problems with that. You know, um, there's always uh, there's drinking, you know, drugs, and those are attractive to both um, men and women. But I think men are often more prone to toward you know some of those things. So yeah, that's that's my perspective. And I think for women, like it's a lot of the same thing, especially. Like, whether you want to be spending time with girlfriends or that special someone and you put your focus more on others rather than maybe church. Mm -hmm. And also, like, electronics and stuff and the internet. Maybe you spend half your day on Pinterest looking at fashion <laughs> designs rather than time in prayer. And, but, but a lot of the same other temptations, like you said. So it's, it's mm -hmm. fairly similar but just different ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, well, so while we're talking about college kids losing their faith, I also think it would be helpful to mention some more specific topics, like the differences maybe between students at private colleges versus public ones. Are there, I mean, are there even differences? The availability to continue in your faith is often more at private colleges, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that people will take that opportunity. Mm -hmm. So do you, Nicolette, have something to say about that? Well, I think, you know, there's... With the public schools, <laughs> with the public schools, you um, it can be more secular, and there's a lot more secular groups, and you don't have to necessarily focus on faith, like it's not within the classrooms and the teachers and your class discussions, but there are a lot of bases that you can grow in spirituality with other friends who are Christian, or if you have the Newman Centers are mm -hmm. on campus a lot, and they're yep. growing a lot um, on campus ministry. Like, we have focus ministry, and that's we have it here at uh, the U Mary campus, and they're also all throughout different public schools. And if you get involved with those, it's you can still be involved with faith on a public campus. But then I also hear people who say, well, yeah, you can go to a Christian school, and growing your faith there, but it's there. There are some reasons not to attend a Christian school, like if because universities are like modern mission fields, and non-Christian schools need you. It's one of the arguments, or that your faith strengthens in adversity, or that Christian schools aren't necessarily safe havens for your faith. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, that's true. Because you know, even at a Christian school, if you wanted to get into the wrong crowd, I mean, you could always find a bad group of people pretty much anywhere. <laughs> it's your motivation and your values that keep you from going there, you know, so. A lot of it, I think, depends on the actual person going to the college and not the college itself. Yeah. Um, so what if you're at a Catholic university, like our own University of Mary? Mm -hmm. What happens if you're Lutheran or another denomination? Um, is it harder to keep your faith then? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I think it, it would be a lot more difficult, you know, of course, we're Catholics, and we're attending a Catholic university, so, I mean, it's it's really easy and really natural for us to continue our faith here. But if you're attending and you're, you know, you're, say you're Lutheran, I mean, there's not much in the way of Lutheran ministry going on here. Um, you know, there are a few things, like there's a praise the Lord, praise and worship session, uh, usually bi-weekly. It's, actually, there's one coming up on November 13th at 9 p.m. in O'Keefe Hall, if anyone uh, is interested in that. Um... And there's Bible studies. So, you know, people are aware here that other people of Christian faiths need that ministry. But it, it is harder, especially on, on a Catholic campus. But I think a good solution to that would be, you know, people in the, in the Christian tradition still share a lot of the same values and doctrines. Yeah. And back home, I had a youth group who, you know, there were, there were Baptists, Presbyterians, um, Lutherans, Catholics. And we had a really strong youth group because everyone focused on those core values and beliefs. And we just focus on that, praise the Lord together, and it was a wonderful youth group. So I think that's a good solution to some of those problems. Yeah, definitely. Um, so now moving the discussion along about college kids losing their faith, we've discussed the reasons and history behind it, but I just want to know if there is any way to reverse this problem. Where Where is the right spot to put your energies? Should you do it while they're in college or perhaps prepare them better? Is there, do you know, Nicolette, of any ways that we can help that? Well, like Ian said earlier, college is really a time of new beginnings. So you're finding new friends and new groups to get involved in. But, like, there's, faith isn't a do-it-yourself project. Like, it, by attending daily mass and confession for Catholics or getting involved in Bible studies or praise the Lord worship groups or something like that, it's like, it's like going to the gym. And if you can't stay spiritually fit unless you commit to the time. 
So you have to find ways to get involved with that when you're at college, whether it's like, um, it's, I think it's a lot of the friends you keep is a good thing. Because mm-hmm. yeah. like Jesus sent the disciples out in groups, at least two people. Mm-hmm. He didn't send them out alone. So if you find someone, whether you're on a private campus or a public campus, you can find even just like one other person who thinks and believes the same way you do. Yep. You can stay together and continue to grow in your faith together, mm-hmm. especially if you have a big group of friends. And just by growing closer to God through prayer and just taking time out of your day to do that and getting good mentors Mm -hmm. is also another thing whether it be Mm -hmm. teachers or people uh, adults you know on campus peers you know on campus or people back home even Mm -hmm. um yeah that's true and i think community is i mean obviously you need you need a solid internal spiritual life but community is the thing that'll really keep it alive and keep it going i think it's really important if you're isolated an isolated christian is a paralyzed christian i've heard before and it's really true because when you don't have good yeah. friends, it's nearly nearly impossible to progress in your spiritual life. That is so, so true, yeah. Um, so today, Nicolette, Ian, and I have had a good discussion on the issues related to students losing their faith in college. We've talked about the reasons, history, questions, and possible solutions regarding this issue. We hope you found it informative and helpful. Thank you for listening to our Questions of Faith podcast. My God's not dead, he's surely alive. He's living on